time. Not all you like. So as you all saw, I was just playing Genshin Impact and that happened. So I started wondering, is this possible in reality? And to answer this question, I made an entire feature length YouTube video. So sit back and enjoy. Let's say we have an RPG character and we'll name him Brad. According to video game logic, as long as our character doesn't hit 0 HP, anything can be hit. Let's put it to a test. In reality, it takes time to heal wounds, but what if it did? Before we can jump onto the juicy part, we need to answer some core questions. Like what are wounds and how do we heal? <clears throat> so according to a random article I forgot to cite, wounds are breaks or openings in the skin, simple enough. Since your skin protects your body from germs, this isn't good news. Because when germs enter a wound, they can cause infection. But luckily, tissue growth and rebuilding occurs. The wound starts to fill in with new tissue called granulation tissue, Next, skin begins to form over this tissue. Over the next three weeks or so, the body repairs broken blood vessels and new tissue grows. When cells divide into two or more cells, it's called mitosis. But the cells require material for cell division. And for the majority part, cells are made up of Proteins 55%, lipid 10%, RNA 20%, DNA 3% and some other molecules here and there. So as long as the food our character eats is full of protein and fat, there should not be a problem. In video games, food digestion or absorption is almost instant, whereas IRL, it takes about 3-6 to six hours for complete absorption. Also, foods that contain carbohydrates are the first to be digested, followed by proteins and then fats. So let's just assume that our character can, you know, somehow digest his food without any downtime. Come on, cut me some slack. Even fast dividing mammalian cells like in human body take up to 24 hours for a single cell division. That's fast considering liver cells take up to a whole year. But in video games, body repair is so instant that it even puts cancer cells to shame. But there exists a biological limit that prevents cells from dividing indefinitely and it's called Hayflick limit. The Hayflick limit coined by American ana anatomist. The Hayflick limit coined by American anatomist Leonard Hayflick in 1961. It is the number of times a normal cell population will divide before cell division stops. Hayflick limit defines the number of possible cell division and depend on the length of chromosomal telomeres, which decrease in normal cells after every cell division. Ideally, the default Hayflick limit of a normal stem cell is about 72, but in reality, it averages about 250. Meaning every time a cell divides, the total number of times it can divide goes down. Well, I'll just whip up a simple code in C++ to illustrate an example. As you can see, a single cell can divide up to 1 quadrillion cells. To put it in comparison, that's almost equal to 70 times the total number of cells in your body. But the average human body has over 15 trillion cells. So we can multiply this number, 1 quadrillion, with the number of cells in the body and we get
Well, I'll let Google do it. 16 octillion, 888 septillion, 498 sextillion, 500 quintillion cells. So almost one quadrillion complete bodies. So our character is functionally unkillable. Okay then, video over, bye, thanks for watching. But you see, there is a critical error in a hypothesis. That's not how the body works. Because some cells are made up differently and they have specialization. And these special cells have various specific tasks. And some of them divide, some of them don't. I looked into the composition of cells in the human body and it goes something as follows. First, the red blood cells. Do they divide? No, because they don't have a nucleus. No nucleus means no DNA. Platelets. No, they don't. Bone marrow cells. Obviously, they don't. If they did, this would not be a thing. Vascular endothelial cells. Uh, it's kind of complicated. They don't divide. The mature ones just replace the ones that got destroyed. So technically, they do divide. Lymphocytes or white blood cells, I think. That's what they are called. They do. They don't. Kind of confusing. They normally do, but uh, only when they are attacked by germ cells. Hepatocytes. Well, it's rather complicated again. Uh, as you can see, it's a god first paper and I only have 15 minutes. So, they do. Neurons. No, they don't and the big brain meme is a lie. Bronchial endothelial cells. Yes. Epidermal cells. The uppermost layer of skin. Yeah, they definitely do. Respiratory interstitial cells. Yes. Fat cells? Yes. Thermal fibroblasts? Yes. Muscle cells? They divide only in childhood and stop when reaching adulthood. But then how do bodybuilders get so buff and fit? That's because they can grow in number, but they can grow in size. And this is called hypertrophy. Other miscellaneous cells? Let's just say I was feeling merciful and let this slide. Okay, rapid fire round. So, by my calculation, the total percentage of cells that can divide is 7.7%. So, if I'm right, the total number of cells that can regenerate are 7.7% of 15 trillion, which is 1 trillion, 115 billion cells. And if these cells divide to their maximum potential, we will finally have a solid number. 1 octillion, 300 septillion, 414 sextillion, 392 quintillion, 403 quadrillion, 230 trillion, 720 billion cells. Oh boy, that's a lot. But doing some quick maths, we find out that number to put in comparison, when divided by the number of cells in our body, 15 trillion, can create 86 trillion complete bodies. Still making our character functionally immortal, as long as it doesn't want to become a dried husk of meat without muscle, blood or brain. As I said before, some cells have specialization and these special cells have various specific tasks. You cannot expect your fat cells to relay information like a neuron, can you? They are useless because cells necessary for human function, like blood, neurons, just can divide. But this ability on its own is not an absolute waste. Damage to some part of the body can be minimized and minor injuries like cuts and bruises will be a breeze. But if a character gets too bold and ends up with a fatal injury, it's literally game over. So no matter how many bottles of grass juice a character chugs or how many cheese wheels he shoves into his throat, it will be his demise. So the next time Gwyneth Paltrow releases the newest group, they'll regenerate a liquid slug. Hmm, now that I think about it, something like this may already exist. Okay, so whenever that happens, you can be like... Wait a minute! Okay then, video over, bye, thanks for watching.